Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Adept is Ridiculous podcast. My name is DK Diamantes. His name is Bricky. And I think I know what we're going to learn about today, but I'll leave that to Bricky to explain. But if you enjoyed today's episode, head over to patreon.com slash Adept is Ridiculous, where you can consider supporting your maybe favorite Warhammer 40k podcast. If we hit the massive $20,000 goal on Patreon, I will be taking the helm and doing one fantasy episode where I try and teach Bricky things and we'll just go from there. But you all know how the detective episode turned out. So, you know, anyway, uh, you also get access to the discord bloopers. If they happen, good stuff. Patreon.com slash adeptus ridiculous Bricky books and merch club books and merch club. Is that, Oh, is that how that goes? (laughs) <laughs> merch is at orchidate.com check it out we got good stuff there we have the great adeptus ridiculous flag that many of you have been posing with which has been so super cool. awesome so cool uh, and we have a brand new print also for sale as we know tis clay season mm. and tis the season indeed that's hey that poster is some tasteful clay mm-hmm also read master of mankind Oh man, I I'm only like an hour into that thing. Oh boy! All right, is, is I, it, we'll, we'll, is it we'll get it. Who boy? Oh no, it's not bad or anything. It's just there's only eleven and a half hours left. You know, I find you just like if you segment like an hour of your day each day, it goes by pretty decently. Yeah, that's usually what I do when uh, we're coming up to uh, you know talk about it. It's like okay, I'll I'll, I'll do an hour a day and. Yeah. If I'm really into it, maybe I'll get in two hours or something, but yeah. All righty then. Mm. So well, you had an idea of what this episode was going to be about. What was your thought process? What was uh, your thought process? I mean, I, I, I was pretty sure this was going to be, what, the, the World Eaters Codex? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, all right. I, I don't really have anything to, to go from there. Yeah, I know you got that right. Hell yeah, brother. Hell, hell, hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I gotta be honest, the World Eaters Codex uh, cover art is some baller shit. Oh, I have not seen it. But honestly, the G-Dub's been pretty spot on with their uh, coda- codex? codex and book artwork lately. So I'm I'm ready to see it. Their, uh, their various codices, one might say. Mm-hmm, codices, yep. Mm-hmm. Do you have anything else to say after the word codices has been uttered by me's? Codices nuts. There it is. There it Thank is. You. Thank you're, you. You're welcome. Everyone Thank clap. You. Please. Thank please, you. Please, please clap. Uh, Shy, put up the say the line, Bart meme. I think that's appropriate here. Say the line, Bart. These nuts. I Yay! I can't believe anyone would ever give. Oh, there's the artwork. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. It's Whoa. a thing, dudes. It's a thing. <laughs> that is so metal. Oh my god. Who 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 are they getting to do this artwork? Cause I need I I mm, praise them. Praise be. Praise be. be to the master of mankind. So uh yes, we've talked about the world eaters. We have talked um about Angron, the Red Angel. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, that picture is, is kind of neat. Um, though, of course, like we've done before, it's a lot of fun to go through the actual codex and, and find any enjoyable tidbits of information. Oh, sure. Also, do they actually call Angron the Red Angel? Yeah, he always hated the title because he thought it was too much like Sanguinius. Yeah, I, I kind of figured he would hate being called the Red Angel. Well, I wasn't thinking Sanguinius, but just because he's so, like, crazy and battle-hardened that he wouldn't want to be called an angel. He'd want to be, like, the Red Destruction or, like, the the Red Annihilator or something like that instead of just, like, the Red Angel, you know? It's certainly not his kind of doodad, not his kind of uh, cup of tea. He does not like the name. <laughs> but he's the Red Angel, and it's stuck. Oh, okay. Well, maybe um, he could be the angel that makes it rain red. I guess I don't know. It's he certainly makes it rain red. That's no. <laughs> that's no fucking. <laughs> when he there. paints the town red, he paints the town red. So if you look at this overall image right here, from left to right, it's some pretty interesting groups. 
Um, the mortals you see on the left are actually cultists. Um, those are okay. corn demonic cultists, often referred to as uh, jackals, chaos jackals. Okay. Um, they're just like super corn based. You can see like that that lady down there has like a metal spiked jaw that's protruding out of her jaw. She does. She does. Um, the other guy's been blinded, so on. You can see some more of the jackals on the right hand side of the frame. Uh, oh, bet- you know, yeah. between all of the uh, oh, you know. 40 million skulls that <laughs> well, proliferate I mean, this thing. It's the world eaters. If it wasn't just Skull Mountain, it would not be the world eaters. So, I mean, you gotta, you gotta. That's very true. The uh, gentleman in the dead center <laughs> on the bottom, the gentleman, the, the kind gentleman, I believe is one of those many exalted <laughs> eight bounds. Uh, as you oh, can yep. see, he's quite mm-hmm. weird looking. Um, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. He's got all the all the little tendrils uh, coming out of his face. Yeah, and the big the big tongue and stuff. And mm-hmm. uh, I, I'm I'm not sure if it's technically supposed to be Karn up there. Um, it's certainly a world leader. I don't know if Karn looks a little different. Wait, the, the, that has to be Karn because he doesn't have a. It's just that one buff arm with no armor. Well, yeah, but I, I'm not quite sure if the. I, I don't know. Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of armless dudes in this goddamn book. There's a lot. Oh, um, they just have only one sided armored. Like, Karn? yeah, but like you oh. know, Karn normally is one axe plus plasma pistol, and and the oh. helmet's a little different. And normally he has the chain around the arm because he's running with Gore Child, and oh, he's got two true. axes that don't quite look like Gore Child, so it might not necessarily be Karn, but it, it certainly gives you Karn vibes. Definitely. Um, mm-hmm. Now, this episode probably won't be too long, and it's probably because the book itself is a bit light on mm. um, on reading material. Yeah, uh, so it's more about, like, their tabletop rules and new adjustments and stuff rather than, like, a lot of lore and background no, stuff. No, not quite. More so just... If, if you're gonna pick the the simplest legion, you you might have found it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, so the beginning is they have this little thing in the world leaders. The first words of the book, which is they are the eternally blood soaked. Theirs is a rage that burns hotter than a million stars, stoked by the butcher's nails pounding in their brains and the waxing wrath of the immaterium itself. Beneath the whirring teeth of their chain weapons, 10,000 worlds and more have been drowned in gore. Yet no amount of slaughter will ever sate their lust for butchery, nor satisfy their bloody deity. They will never, ever have killed enough. Wow, that is easily the most World Eaters introductory paragraph or whatever I have ever heard in my life. It there is, is it's pretty up there. <laughs> it, like you don't need to know a whole lot about 40k to be like, "Yep, that's that's the world eaters all right." Mhm. There is a uh, there's another quote right after that which goes as follows: "Blood for the blood god, skulls for the <laughs> throne of corn. See in these words a purity of simplicity. No devious tricks, no indulgent excess, no ponderous rot, only rage, blood, skulls." and death what kind of warrior seeks anything else one who is distracted weak Ooh, also very very on the nose world eaters but you know it, it fits it does them fit. to a t like you know they're they're, they're they're not tricky they're they're simple-minded people they just go in and stir up shit there's honestly as i read through this uh codex there's quite a bit of like sadness i oh. actually started to really feel for the world eaters in kind of a weird way um that i mean they're already kind of a sad legion because of you know of oh, the, their origin sure their origins you you start off with angron being being forced to be a slave and then having his head mutilated by uh, the butcher's nails yeah and then finding his sons proceeding to beat the ever living shit out of them until Karn came here and was like, hey, stop it. <laughs> stop it. And then they all put the nails in their head to hopefully, you know, appease their father, which never really worked. 
No. That, and then no. that's driving them worse and worse and worse. And yeah. uh, it's rough. The, the, as far as a lot of the uh, reading stuff here, material, is about the Legion just being rather divided. You know, due to their want to constantly murder and maim and kill, they're often doing it to each other. And oh. it's just, you can never really have like more, a, a, a huge group of world leaders working together. The only people who could really band them all together would be like Angron, maybe Karn. Yeah. But so, even then. So it's very similar to like an orc vibe where it's like they're so bloodthirsty that they don't really care who they kill as long as they kill. Oh, 100%. Uh, the difference is is that while orcs do it for fun, um, the world eaters seem to do it to no peace. Oh, because they only no peace in battle and in killing, and oh, okay. it's the only time oh, their right, nails the nails will ever the nails, not. Yep, right, right. The nails will do that to you. Oh, it's the only time they will ever not know the stoke of the nails is in just mindless butchery. Yeah, and uh, like, like there, are, there are moments in this book where they talk about how um, certain members of the world eaters have committed such savage butchery on a planet that they would get shot down. And then after getting shot down, like the ar- their arm would regrow in blood because Corn himself was favoring <laughs> them. It's like, oh, I finally they like like. Can you imagine a, a Chaos Space Marine <laughs> World Eater, like like a genuine uh, one guy that can like remove cities, who just maybe kills and maims seventy thousand people. And then you finally blow his arms off or something with like a last cannon and they regrow from blood because Korn is like, damn, dude, oh, good man. work. Keep it up. Yeah. <laughs> Get back out there, son. Oh, man, that's 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 brutal. Can they regrow like anything? Like if they say like they get their head cut off, will like Korn be like, no, and then no, th- this is this is warp limbs. Or, this is warp fuckery stuff. No, no, there's no there's no specific uh, specificity to it. They may get okay. disintegrated and then just trudge out of a pool of blood later. It entirely <laughs> it's warp magic. It's weird bullshit. That's another one I want to see animated because that seems like a creepy horror thing to see. Just this space ring getting blown up and then just suddenly out of nowhere, all of that gore just starts crawling and slinking back together and. <laughs> Space Marine. Yeah, people forget that Corn is is Corn. Like he still does weird, nefarious warp shit. He disdains sorcery, but it's not that he has no magic, so to speak. Yeah, he can still do some funky shit, but yeah. they like to keep it a little more on the uh, on the down low. Yeah, and ser- serving uh corn will just flat out make you a murderer anyway. Yeah. Um like so for example. But but yeah, like that's the kind of concept of knowing peace. Like Angron, there's a whole section on Angron, obviously. Oh, and, of course, there should be. Um, the fact of Angron is that, like, it's really sad because Angron hates everything, but he hates no one more than he hates himself. Yeah. Um, he has always craved for freedom. He was a slave to the High Riders of Nuceria then to the Emperor, and now he is a slave to Korn. And oh. the thing is, is that he gets this greatest sense of freedom from the moments of, like, truly mindless slaughter that grant him peace. And mm-hmm. he knows for a true fact that he will never, ever be free from the pain of life itself anymore. Oh, yeah, that's true, because in the uh, was it's the Angron book where he finally knew a moment of peace, like right before he uh, sacrificed himself or he died or whatever. And but yep. then he just respawns and it's like, well, shit, never going to get that again. This sucks. And yeah, it was the Angron arcs of Omen before he smashed that giant uh, mini Astronomicon they had mm-hmm. to let loose the uh, artifact. Yep. And uh, oh, and so yeah. that's really just the Angron constantly yearns for death because death brings him peace. But since he can't have it, uh, when I say mindless butchery, like I mean mindless. <laughs> like, like you know when you get the runners high. Uh, well, 
Being that I am a cave okay. dwelling hermit, okay. no, I you do know not what know. the runner's high is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, God yes, damn I it. do. Uh, this is literally like the it's a it's the blood wet high, like the the blooded bl- bloody blade high. It, it's mindless butchery, and yeah. because of that, the nails are satisfied, and and you almost enter like a trance of just pure. Uh bliss of nothing hurts nothing is anything i don't i like i don't even know where i am or what i'm doing but i'm just going and because of that i am happy i would not want to see angron when he is in the blood high oh boy i would not want to be anywhere i wouldn't even want to be on the same planet that's oh boy no thank you um, yeah, it's, it's a whole, a whole world with that, but yeah. we talked a little bit about, uh, his weapons, Samniaris and spine grinder. Um, <laughs> yeah, Samniaris <laughs> is, uh, yeah. Hi, I'm a Slanesh demon who think <laughs> is the, I'm the greatest gladiator known to man. And Grant took that personally and, yep. uh, beat them to death with a metal pipe <laughs> <laughs> until it forged into a sword. <laughs> mm hmm. And Spine Grinder was made as a tribute uh, by Dark Mechanicum and the Dark Mechanicum. And he was like, wow, you're giving me a tribute and the tribute doesn't involve skulls. Cringe. So he killed all of them with the same (laughs) axe they made for him. Is that actually why he did it? Because it had no skulls on it? Or was it just like, hmm, I need to try this out right now. (laughs) And just put it down. It was because the the idea of offering um, piety to him By like, here is your good new axe, my lord. Please bless us with your whatever. And he's like, wow, you're going to get my favor by making me an axe and not by killing shit? Fuck you. Die. (laughs) And But he still continues to use the axe that they made for him, of course. Yeah, Spine Grinder. Uh, Its other name was something else. It was um, Perseax Folly, which is the name of the planet. Oh, well, yeah, that (laughs) also apropos name. That's right. We talked about these a little bit. Yeah. We we really uh we really talked ma- mainly everything we can talk about for Angron at the moment. Yeah. Um there's a little bit of Karn in here too. Of course, he's the one right after Angron. Mm-hmm. Um as we all know, he betrayed a bunch of people on the one planet, burned all their tents and ruined everything. No way. Is that why they call him Karn the Betrayer? Just maybe. Oh, revelations. In game if you uh yeah, at the end of the fight phase, if there's an ally near you, you roll a dice, and if you roll a one, he just kills them. <laughs> it's pretty great. Very on brand. Like it. Very I on like, brand. I like how lore went into into the tabletop rules. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, the weapon he uses is a gore child. Oh yeah, um, that's uh, Angron's old axe, right? The one that mm-hmm. uh, the teeth got grinded off, and you're not supposed to, as a world leader, you're not supposed to retrofit old broken weapons of ang run into your own but kind of was like ah fuck it this is too good to pass up pretty much uh shy makes a point the fact that all world leaders hate each other and can't work together is directly his fault i think it's like half his fault there's also the problem where half they're all like blood mad so they kind of just kill each other anyway and it's like but but there's a lack of trust going around in general (laughs) and i would argue karin the betrayer might be the guy yeah, I mean, there's. I'm. I'm sure there wasn't a whole lot of trust before Karn, but he certainly didn't help matters by doing that either. So, you know, I'd put some of the blame on his shoulders. And Maybe his not one all of giant it, but... bicep. <laughs> yeah, his one massive shoulder. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's interesting. They talk a bit about Karn in here in a weird way. It says Karn remain or his um when he's not howling with wrath, his voice is low and measured, even soft. His calm face is long and serious with a nobility that belies his murderous capabilities. He retains all tactical brilliance he ever had, and when in control of his senses fully, he's able to wield fleets and armies of Chaos Space Marines and their mortal followers with great nuance and skill. Yeah, um, that, that actually doesn't surprise me, because that's how he was in, in the books. Like yeah, he, but he, when he, he wasn't, wasn't fighting, fully he was there, he was stoic and kind of like level headed, and and you know he, he wasn't just a mindless dope or anything. He wasn't fully like down bad though with corn. 
That's true. He hadn't gone like full force chaos corn worship yet. That that's true. He also wasn't the betrayer yet. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. He's uh yeah, he definitely seems really cold blooded, uh, as Shy mentioned. Um they say that very often people who follow him do so of their own free will, as he doesn't really give a shit who follows him, and if they live or die, he just doesn't care. Wow. Um, he's uh, he's kind of conflicted. It says he believes his legion should not fight against their nature as destroyers, and uh, continues to slay for the blood god and his anger on et cetera, et cetera. Yet he wonders if the world leader's existence is one torturous, never-ending nightmare from which they can never awake. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> From the sound of everything, yeah, it's it it it's not exactly. A, I guess it's not a field day to be any chaos space marine, but yeah, it's not lovely. No, wow, that's some artwork. Good lord, world leaders, woo! Wow. Now there's also another gentleman that has just been added to the books. The newest one, um, magic is uh, friendship is magic. Uh, lord <laughs> Invocatus. Have we uh, talked about him? That name sounds super familiar. It was a brand new model that was just out. It's the dude running the brass dog. Oh, it's that guy. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, and now I know who we're talking about. So Lord Invocatus has kind of come around rather recently, and, and like whenever they add a new character, he's like, he just kind of arrived, and, mm-hmm. and no one really knows where he came from. Very now he, cool mini, goddamn. It's a very cool mini. It's him and his steed called Kalgaruth, the steed of the burning sky. Wow, um, that's so badass. So he's pretty dope. Uh, he has a bolt pistol named Trickster's Doom and a chain axe known as Coward's Bane, of course. <laughs> um, but Great the, name for an axe. But the interesting thing about him is that he has a war band known as the Fire Riders where he bursts from the embarkation decks of his flagship known as the Red Blade Rider. And these, I, I can't, there's no better way to explain it. They are, are like Valkyries. They oh, are on, cool. on these big dogs, and the dogs are, are charging midair as if there was ground of flame. They are oh. leaving a trail of blood, flame, and oil soot behind them as they literally fly through the sky on a magical dog. I remember talking about these. I don't know if you were talking about them because like the mini had just come out, but man, they are still just the coolest thing ever. You like, oh you like the, the guy in the juggernaut? Oh yeah. These are so awesome. Love it. I would want to be uh, uh, a red red blade rider is that what they were? Red fire rider? What are they called again? Fire riders. Red fire rider. So cool. Those steeds. The axe. The very nice. It's very neat. very nice. The um and it goes it consistently goes even farther than that because uh his axe for example he's like fully ambidextrous so he just jumps between his hands as he's carving through mm. folks. Um, but the main method of war he does is a little different. Uh, he's like hit and run style. Uh, oh, a that makes of like, sense. Yeah, but it's not very corn. On the in your first mindset is the hit and run. You wanna you wanna stay. You wanna get the skulls. Oh. Well, yeah. That oh, I guess that's that's true. If you were corn, why would you why would you run? Just keep hitting. You should hit and hit. Though to him, he deems it like all this time you're wasting going and uh, rooting out every last skull. You could be just going ahead to the next set of prey and hitting them again and over and over again. He says he gets more kills for Korm because he just goes from thing to thing to thing instead of having to go find someone down who's hiding in a ditch or something. I mean, that's that's also a fair mindset. Like, he's not wrong. So. He, he's not. It's a, it's a concept. It's a way yeah. to do it. I, I, you know, I'm gonna follow him. I'm gonna follow the the red fire rider. I'm I'm, I'm gonna follow you, Lord Invocatus. And he's just it's just the fire rider. His uh, his flagship is called Red Blade Rider. Man, uh, I know some, it's too much. Should I put a counter? But how many times I screw that up? Because it's gonna be a lot, and it's gonna be in the comments. So you might as well do it for him. Um, there's an interesting little part here, though. His helmet is neato. It's called the Bloodstorm <laughs> Helm. 
Ooh. and he completed something. It's a mysterious set of deeds called the Road of Eight Bloody Steps, where there was a demon that once rode his mount, and he killed the demon and fashioned the demon into his helmet. In which, oh. if you look at his picture, you can kind of see it's got like a like a um, horns kind of yeah. forming into the helmet. Now that I look at like the full size picture of it, ah, that's oh, that's great. He just gets cooler and cooler. So he killed he killed a freaking demon. And was just like, yeah, that was fun. Now your skull is my helmet. Pretty much, but the helmet specifically allows him to note things like ambushes and all kinds of weird trickery. Hence why he'll never run into things like major ambushes or or traps and the like, because oh, nice. that's the whole point of the helmet. And with the helmet on the demon, he's then able to ride the steed and then et cetera, et cetera. Oh, so that I mean, that's perfect for him because like he's never going to like hit and run into an ambush or if he sees an ambush, he can hit and run around it and ruin the ambush. Oh, dude, I love him. I love this guy. Dude, it gets so funny, though. There's a little excerpt right afterwards of the Hawk Lords chapter. No, I do who they are. I guess probably Raven Guard. Um, okay. And they're flying around in the air on their uh, just their like Stormhawk interceptor. So just like classic Space Marine uh, aircraft. Mm-hmm. And they're shooting down because they had a, a corn like cultist infection in their planet or whatever. Yeah. So they're going around, re- removing the infection, killing all the people down there, trying to stop the cult, et cetera, et cetera. Then they look in the clouds and they like, what is that? That ball of fire. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and it's him just like <laughs> riding his way <laughs> through the sky at them. And like, that's really bizarre. And then through the clouds comes an entire armored company. I'm, th- I'm talking. It's him oh. and multiple other dudes on steeds, right? Uh-huh. But then there's like a rhino, and oh. like a like, like a rhino, not like a, like a physical one, like a a troop carrier, a tank, and like a land raider, a tank oh. r- flying <laughs> in the sky on a on a ground of fire. <laughs> that's 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 the imagery of that is so stupid. I love it. It is literally them just like driving as if the air was the road, and the, and like there's just tanks f- driving in the sky. <laughs> and I, so, oh man, these might be my new favorite 40k dudes because I there's nothing about this I don't love. I I mm, it's I might have new it's faves. really dumb, but in a fun way, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and, and of an course, aesthetically amazing way. And so, of course, you know, they, they attacked and the dude jumped on his steed and jumped in the cockpit and, you know, carved the dude in two as as oh, as classic. Sure. But, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, anywho, that that was just I, that, that image was so funny to me. <laughs> just a, an armored just... company. It, it's like four <laughs> tanks, troop transports, <laughs> and then all these like unicorn sons of bitches flying in the sky, shooting people and then like stabbing them. It's so dumb. Is, is there any limit to, like, where they... Like, could they just fly tanks in space and use them for a void battle if they wanted to? I feel like they might push it a little bit that way. I know Angron doesn't abide by the laws of uh, space, but he's Dude. also a demon primarch of corn. True, true. And I guess you wouldn't have void shields for, like, just these regular troopers, so they'd probably have a pretty hard time doing yeah. a space battle. Yeah, it could be a little bit difficult, That'd but either tough. way, it's tough. still pretty funny. They've got little Geller fields on the on the on the Mount's horns. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's it's just it's just really funny. It, it's so silly. Yeah, I um, love it. Past that, though, uh, after Lord and Makatis, there was a talk of a whole bunch of various war bands of the World Eaters. It says a legion broken and divided. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, they talk about the jackal cultists, which are pretty neato. Um, okay. But there okay. are some of these legions that are just really interesting. Um, there's the Gladiator Cadre 331, which goes back to the old days of Nuceria, where if they would want a duel, they would let it heal normally. But if they lost the duel, or they would put a cut in themselves 
and let it heal normally. Oh. But if they, if they lost the duel, they would rub dirt in it, making it a black streak, which was right. um, something with the something rope. I forget what the triumph rope. Yeah, yeah, they did that in the uh, in the book too, right? And what was it? Karn had this rope that went around like his entire body or something because he just kept winning duels or or wait. No, yeah, it wasn't I, Karn, think it was Ang- Karn, I think it was Angron. Yeah, it might have because I was gonna say if I remember right, Karn didn't actually like fighting in the arena because it was like, eh, this isn't like a real fight, so who gives a shit? Yeah, a little bit. It, it was, um, it was I think Angron because I think it was a new Sarian tradition way back yeah. in their homeworld. Yeah. Um. Okay, let's talk about the eight bounds. Hell yes. I, I have to talk about the eight bounds. So um, hell yeah. Give me a moment. There's a uh, I, I have to put this in the Adric chat on Discord, not the private chat. Um, oh, okay, okay, okay. Here it is. Uh, it's just a picture of the guy, and it. Whoo, man. Oh, mama. Um, that that looks like the um, uh, the the Final Fantasy 14 thing where the guy is about to get enveloped in in fire, but the chaos version of it. Ooh, oh, mama. I don't know what the hell you're talking about, but all right. I don't worry about it. Shy, Shy probably knows what I'm talking about. So I, whoa, the art on the Jesus Lord. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> oh my God, that's that is absolutely on brand, on world eater. God, that's so cool. Why is everything about this codex so it metal? Uh, it's, it's so metal and amazing and just oh it's pure aesthetic and I love it. I I think I think I'm going to start worshiping the blood god. The, the, the hey, man, it's simple. Yeah, it's simple and it's so cool. So the eight bound <sighs> are trapped in something called the eight cage with probes and needles plunged into their butcher's nails. Oh. And the moment the cage is bolted shut the mind is thrust directly into the fringes of the warp. And it takes oh. as long as it needs for them to either be defeated or emerge victorious in a spiritual battle with the soul-thirsting corn entities. Um, mm-hmm. Those who are not in the cage will hear inside the cage them thrashing, screaming, rattling chains. But no one actually knows what happens. Some say they experience a battle in a blood-soaked arena uh, amongst like vast dunes of bleached bones or battles on mountains of skulls. Uh, their rage is like axes in hands. Some mm-hmm. uh, are subject to endless torture by sadistic cackling demons. Ooh. You don't really know what goes on in there. It's, all, it's always different depending on the person. Sounds like a big, weird drug trip. Uh, however... Those who lose their battle suffer pretty awful fates. Oh, yeah, some I, it's are not fun if you lose. Some are turned into chaos spawn, uh, which are the okay. big fleshy uh, tentacly things where there are flesh erupts from the cage. Uh, others okay. are killed, and when the eight cages open, all of their body parts are sliced to ribbons. They just they just pour out. Oh! <laughs> Sometimes they open the cage and they're just gone. Oh, they're just, there's nothing in there? They're oh, just that's... gone. Ooh, those are, ooh, boy. That's a, that's a big gamble you take. That's, mm-hmm. a, that's a big... Oh, my God, that's a chaos spawn? Chaos spawn is just like an amalgamation of flesh. Holy sh! Look, look at that. What the heck? Jesus Christ. Nah, you gotta, you gotta throw out your, your, your lion there, buddy. Yeah, I had to. For that? Look at yeah. this thing. Chaos spawn are just big fleshy weirdos. There's no form or, f- or function. They just are. No, that's that's a JFC. That's a Jesus fucking Christ. That's whew. So those who emerge victorious from the eight cage are eight bound giant muscle warriors with eight demons bound inside them, vying for control <laughs> over their own soul and body. Uh, however. Over time, sometimes all these nine souls, them and the eight demons, can synthesize into a single metaphysical entity as like some kind of coalesced equilibrium. And those are the exalted eight bound. Ah, uh, I was going to say, what, like an exalted eight bound sounds like a problem. 
Uh, yes, I think <laughs> I remember once I fought world eaters in one game and exalted eight bounds come in squads of three. Mm-hmm. And I remember that well because the exalted eight bound <laughs> champion was there and I killed all I killed his two friends and my whole squad was still alive. And he, the exalted eight bound by himself, killed my entire goddamn crew. <laughs> And it was like, oh, my, my, I think it was like six guys. My six guys killed your two dudes. Yay. He kills all six. I'm like, okay, that's oh. cool, I guess. Sure. Whatever. Whoa. So, the, like, if they're that strong, they've got to be stupid expensive then, right? Because that, that sounds a little bussin. They're, they're pretty pricey, yeah. I was going to say they kind of have, but it sounds like they're worth it. It sounds like they are more than worth it, but I had a, I had one exalted eight bound with a heavy chain glaive uh, tear apart 10, uh, an entire squad of 10 guardsmen in one go. And these, <laughs> these things rip. Whoa. All right. I mean, corn must love the exalted eight bound. Those have got to be just his favorite dudes. He do like them. Mm-hmm. Um, Past that, there are a couple other funky stories that have gone on. Um, There's the Eight Sons, which is kind of cool. Basically, it's eight world eaters that were all brothers, same birth mother. And they tore their way through all kinds of stuff, Tyranids, Orcs, so on. Oh, boy, I thought you were going to say they tore their way through the womb or something. I was like, oh, no. No, this isn't the Iron Warriors. Oh, no. Thank God. (laughs) Um, No more kielbasa. They were they had all these slaves and stuff, and they were tearing through these orcs and they were throwing their skins in a pile, and they started to see the the it start to bubble and boil. Ooh. And they're like, ooh, 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 corn. Corn likes this corn saying cool <laughs> things. So they murdered all of their slaves and threw them in the pile. Okay. And then it created a warp portal. In which the, all the eight <laughs> sons stepped into the portal and appeared. On a totally other city. Oh, and then they went no. to work again. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. And, and with that, they basically go from place to place, murdering enough for corn to make them a new portal, going in and then doing it over and over again. Oh, boy. Oh, but so they just kill so much until corn is like, oh, good job, boys. On to the next one. That's okay. Cool. Cool. Do they, is there anything like special about them or are they just like murder They're just party? Murder party. Oh, okay. <laughs> Where will the magic murder bus take us today? Shy? Yeah. <laughs> come on, come on, quick adventure in and out, two minutes. <laughs> yeah. um, oh man. There's the sixty sixth armored company, also known as the Gore Treads. Who have decided to <laughs> meld their bodies with their tanks that they drive, and in doing so, have outfitted the tanks with blades, spinning saws, chain flails, rollers, and more, because they feel the ecstasy of murder when their tanks kill stuff. Crushing someone oh. under a tread is like crushing them under a boot. Oh, that's so pretty cool, though. You got a whole armored company of dudes fused to their tanks rolling through so are they like uh mini versions of what is, is it the what's the what's the big corn thing that's on the trez that a lord of dis lord of skulls dis- lord of skulls how did, how did i miss that name it's a yeah. corn thing and it's covered in skulls of, wow oh, dk its name is literally corn lord of skulls lord, lord of skulls Ugh, shut up just shut up but yeah are they like mini versions of that where they're just kind of like their bottom half is just like treads with like blades going everywhere and whatnot no no it's more like take that land raider that shy posted imagine uh-huh. a dude fused inside and then just add a million spikes and saws to the land raider oh okay so they're fused inside of the okay gotcha Gotcha. They're like fused in like the pilot seat. Like the right. Car. Okay. Yeah. I like I said, I was thinking about the Lord of Skulls, that kind of fusion where they're just like, yeah, fuck my legs. Let's get a tank tread down there. Okay. Gotcha. Um, there's actually a, a t- really funny little excerpt here that that gave me such a giggle. Um, <laughs> it, w- it was just, I don't know. It just was really humorous. It um, tickled me pink. <clears throat> Few can appreciate what Maser Classic can appreciate. 
fuse with the core of his flagship as he is. He feels his vessel's kills as if they were his own axe slayings. Krasik's ignorant underlings in the Bloody Dawn Warman did once demand to be deployed, to feel ground beneath their feet and the spray of warm blood upon their skin. Krasik felt much contempt for them and conceived a plan. For seven campaigns, he forbade his warriors from attack, instead of bombing worlds from orbit. On the eighth, he unleashed the Bloody Dawn. When the last warrior made planet fall, he opened fire upon the world from above. <laughs> Jesus. Why don't right. the world eaters get along? Well, yeah, what, why would they not trust each other? Come on, guys, it's the eighth day. Go on, go get you some. You've been waiting. So oh, there's two <laughs> final things I want to mention here because they're really interesting. Okay. The first is the purity of slaughter. Um, this <laughs> So corn, oh my God. <laughs> this is actually really fascinating, though. Okay. Um, there is a mental ideal called the Sages of Slaughter. <laughs> they are individuals who fully align themselves with the base aggression. Uh huh. And, like, from a philosophical point of view, they think that losing yourself to slaughter and violence is the only way to find true peace. Okay. That falls in line with, with some corn thinking, sure. Sure, kind of how Angron goes in his little murder trance, and yeah, okay, I get it. it. It's it's a bit nihilistic. They talk about how, <laughs> yeah, like, a little bit. It says to his worshippers, corn is uncomplicated, for he cares not from whence the blood flows. Mm -hmm. To a select few with the intellectual capacity and presence of mind to articulate this, accepting the inevitability of death and suffering is a recognition that nothing truly matters. Oh, well, that that is definitely an interesting take. The idea that uh, if you fully believe in the undercurrent of base aggression that's driven all living things from the dawn of the universe, there is no longer suffering for to them. Pain and misery are merely inevitable results if one attempts to resist the ways of reality. So, for oh. example, you take the followers of Zinch. The more they go into the concepts, they fall more and more into a complicated and elaborate life. There's no peace and training and manipulating the strands of fate. It gets more confusing the farther you devote into Zinch. Slanesh is hedonism and ex excess. It's all about feeling every <clears throat> sensation to its extreme. And so escaping from suffering to find peace is the exact opposite of what they're even trying to achieve in the first place yeah i i that does seem needlessly complicated for for someone that's worshiping corn though so the path to glory basically the road of skulls to follow corn is an experience to have the presence of mind to become one with this baseless violence to become this sage of slaughter they you do not have any kind, it's almost like a monk of blood. You have no, it's pretty funny sounding, but like <laughs> you is. have no material possessions. You don't have a following. You don't have a care. Like you are, and, and then your murdering is beating with the pain of the butcher's nails simultaneously. So much oh. to the, so to the point where you find yourself in this psycho spiritual journey to where you're basically a warrior hermit. That lives entirely on the base instinct of to, of killing. Huh. I mean, that's actually a really cool idea. Uh, I imagine they don't have too many friends, but they have no friends. They're yeah. alone. Warrior hermits. Yeah. That that indulge in just baseless violence. Yeah. I, I imagine they don't. Uh, yeah, they don't. They don't travel in packs. No. It, it becomes. It's like finding true enlightenment. It is basically accepting the simple fact that blood and death and murder is the base functions of the world and of life. And to engage in it is to engage in, well, life. And to go awry from it is to make life more complicated and to just go with this kind of warrior nomad thing is to where you find true, actual peace. Peace that people like the world eaters with the butcher's nails in their heads desperately need. 
Yeah. Huh. So, last but weird, not least. That's kind of a weird concept, but I, I get it. Still you, can, you can see where, they, where they're coming from. Though. Yeah, like, still a weird practice. Still kind of... How does Korn feel about them? Love they keep, them? They keep killing. True, he doesn't care where the blood comes from, so it's like, mm-hmm. hey, sure, whatever. So, the last story of this book is about a Chaos Space Marine currently in the leg of an Imperator Titan, killing his way up the decks of this god machine. <laughs> okay. Um, murdering. I thought you meant he was just like stuck there, like he was just kind of oh. stuck. In the <laughs> pretty funny, though. I, I just thought it was a normal Titan, and it was just like, well, I cut my way in here, and now I don't know how to get out. So he's there to obviously see carnage. He says they are the they are the truth, the only truth. Killing is all there ever was. Killing is all there ever is, and ever will be. He runs his way up. He's killing up Skatari, murdering the Admech, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Kill, death, blood, destroy, more, more, more. And the nails, see, like, he starts to think to himself. He's like, a what group a of empty-eyed, world. drooling servitors lurch towards me, tools revving into activity. Am I so different from them? Once I went wherever the Emperor willed, just as, my, as they obey their machine-deluded masters, now I pursue my agenda. The only agenda, the true agenda, the agenda of killing and of blood. I am free, but in their mindlessness, are they not free in their own way? The nails grind within my skull. Enough, they seem to say. <laughs> kill, only kill. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the spike's like, you're thinking too hard. Stop it. He eventually just wakes up somewhere else. His chain sword is gone with a power axe instead. His chain axe is clogged with meat. He Mm. forgets what happened the last couple of minutes. He just kind of reawakens and has his moment of lucidity again. And he goes killing again, continues and continues. And then he fall. He just drops out of consciousness, not falling, not falling out of consciousness, just the runner's high. Like, yeah, he'll he'll just kind of become lucid again. Yeah. Yeah. He makes his way all the way up to the viewing portals of the God Engine's command sanctum as the ground swiftly approaches, for he has cut the cabling attached to the chamber of the Titan's body. This head I dedicate to Korn as we fall. There is but one life left upon the Titan that must be taken, one that desires to know the eternal peace that death brings. Mine. As the ground rushes closer, I say, Blood for the blood god, skulls for the throne of corn. Wow. That is that is a hell of an ending to that. Jesus. So that's 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 dope though. God. Kind of see the the kind of the kind of tragedy there. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely, yeah. It's uh it's like finally he's done his job. He's finally about to know peace. And that will come with his death as he has cut the head of the Titan off the Titan and is swiftly approaching the ground. (laughs) Which impressive feat for him to get to that point and and do all that. That's a lot of murder. And that's a lot of work. Like, oh man, Korn is like, oh yeah, take a nap, buddy, because that's some good work you did. Yep, you've done well. You can finally know peace. Not Angron, though. Yeah, he's going to stick. I was going to say, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, Korn was like, hey, that's a good job, buddy. Let me bring you back for a little more. Now. Let me, you know, let me let me raise you out of the blood and give you another chance to do even more. Because that was that was quality. That was some great craftsmanship of that killing. He's uh, I mean, he killed the Titan. He worked yeah. his way up <laughs> leg to head. <laughs> that's a lot of slaughter for one dude. Like, wow. Good so work. that's, uh, that's really the last, bit I found, I thought it was Damn. really fascinating seeing this other side of the world eaters, this like mm-hmm. weird, like glad, like gladiators that hate themselves, but they can only find peace in the mindless killing. So they do it. It's yeah. really interesting. I, I like the idea of sort of that warrior's religion. 
It's yeah, it's, it's, the it's sage cool. of slaughter, the sage of slaughter, and like this is our religion. Bloodshed is our peace, and it's like eh, it's it's kind of cool. And of mm. course, those uh, the five the fire riders are just oh god, like sign me up. I I want to be a fire rider when I grow up, Dad. Dad, Dad, can I be a fire rider when I grow up? Ah, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that's that's it for the for this episode. That's that's what I got. Hell yeah, I like that. Let's go. Blood for the blood god. Skulls for the skull throne, my friend. It wasn't that short, no. I, I thought it'd be shorter, but uh, uh, I was, we, we talked a lot. Of, we, DK liked Lord Invocatus. I sure did. I sure... Oh, what a, what a badass Chad. Oh, man. Chad-ass. Yeah, Chad-ass. You get a poster of female Lord Invocatus with some sick abs and huge knockers. But okay, I'm I'm a little we're put no no, <laughs> you know we're gonna end this episode like corn would have in this episode. <clears throat> uh-huh.